Behold a son who is risen from the dead. Has no accident. If you could uh, tell me what actually happened in Iran back then when you you know, got the sentence of lashes and years of prison. You know, the articles that we read, they uh, tell us that the char charges were, for example, uh, insulting the sanctity of Islam, uh, propaganda against the regime of the Islamic Republic of Iran, and so on. But what were you actually doing uh, during this time that got you these charges? Yeah. Um, the story uh, began in November of 2015, uh, two weeks after we released our second album. Uh, at that time, uh, I was 21. My bandmate, Ara, she was 19 year old. And uh, we got arrested by intelligent uh, agency of Islamic Republic. Um, uh, Islamic, uh, sorry. The Revolutionary Guard of Islamic Republic uh, for the charges of blasphemy and uh, doing the translation would be some like doing propaganda against the state through our music. So they kept us in they kept us in uh, solitary confinement for three months. During that time, we were being interrogated, and you know, so that that time they were building the case like. Um, to to get what they want from us. I mean, through the questions that they're asking, and after that, they sent us to the public section of the Evan Prison. And after altogether around a year and a half, uh, we could be able to uh, make bail and for eighty thousand dollars and come out of jail. And uh, the first court gave us six years uh, for the charges, and 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 for and the time and the time that we were in jail, there was also the fear of execution because blasphemy is a very complicated uh, charge in Islamic countries, and there are so many factors that can change the whole sentence for you. Uh, but hopefully, it wasn't the case for us. Uh, so. Uh, gladly we could be able to uh, come out of jail, and the, but the first court, as I told you, gave us six years, but we asked for appeal, and during that time, I felt like uh, there's no like happy ending for this, so I'd rather to leave the country, and I went to Turkey and uh, asked for asylum there. Uh, and, and during the time that I was living in Turkey, I got introduced to some organizations that are working with artists that are uh, like uh, under persecution for what they published in their own country, um, from cartoonists to filmmakers to journalists to musicians, poets, you know. So through through those organizations, I got the invitation to move to Norway. And um, and I moved to Norway in December of 2018. And also, uh, my bandmate, Arash, he also, um, through the same process with some differences, he could also move to Norway in the May of 2019. Um, the, the main reason for the whole arrestment was the lyrical theme and uh, was the music always have been from day one. Um, it's been like political and uh, very critical against the uh, organized religion. And uh, with the interviews that we did uh, about their music during that time, government don't really like to, to see this exposure that is coming from a country that they are trying to perpetuate this picture that 
everyone is with the government and, and people because it's not true. I can I can assure you that like 80, 85 percent of the Iranian population, they don't really want this regime. And uh, that's why they there is like every day there is a big protest in Iran and every once in a while they start shooting at unarmed people, peaceful protesters and uh, throwing people in jail, giving them heavy sentences and, and so on. So that's basically the, 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 the stuff that happened from 2015. A couple of years later, how do you see the situation in Iran at the moment? Is it possible, is there a possibility, for example, metal bands there at the moment? Has the situation changed at all? I mean, uh, we weren't the only metal band in Iran. At that time, even now, I mean, I have friends that they are having metal bands in Iran, and I and I see through the social media that there are bands that are active, and it's very good. Um, it's not that one of the misconceptions that came through our story was that metal is banned in Iran. And metal is not banned in Iran. Music is not banned in Iran. You could be in a jazz band and be arrested for this. The thing is, the, the our, our points of views got us into this. You see, you could be in a jazz band and have the same same ideas as we did, and they arrested you. Yeah, heavy metal is not a friendly genre in Iran for the government, and because there's a huge fan base of people who are listening to this music, and rock music basically wasn't something that came to Iran by 20 years ago. The first uh, soft rock or alternative rock bands, even they, they were even before the revolution, right? They started in, uh, I would say, in 1960. And and, and 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 those eras. So, um, but it's very important for them that what are you trying to say through your art? So just have just for example, it necessarily doesn't mean that if you have a metal band or you play in a metal band, you're in danger. No, it's not that way. It, it's very important that uh, what you're saying in your lyrics, they, they care about the content that you're putting out and uh, and how many people you can like bring and like gather. This is what, like, because they're, they're fascists. This is the thing with fascism. They don't want the second narrative. They just want, they, they give you a parallel reality it's like you're living in a same it's like you're living in two different countries at the same time it's, it's like it, you know what you're saying is a lie and, and and the fact that i was arrested for what i thought kind of says the whole truth that i wasn't doing propaganda i was telling the truth and they don't want that and uh so situation in iran uh regarding metal music there's so much uh, oppression and like suppression censorship and so many other things on art basically and heavy metal is just one of the like most horrible ones um and i hope that things get better but um yeah it's a very long discussion as you said there is uh, metal and rock bands is there like in the bigger cities like in tehran is there a uh, small scenes of bands? Oh, yeah. I mean, I always answer this question, but kind of like, um, it, it's hard to answer. There's no um, underground thing happening. There's no metal festival, right? So since I'm living in here now, to me, a scene is a metal magazine. If there is a metal festival, there's a scene. If there's a metal club, there's a scene. If there's a metal shop, there's a scene. There is none of that on a like in the in the actual like the visib the doesn't have visibility. But everything is more like on a ground. We all we have all of that, but it's more like you you have a boutique, you're selling clothes, and you you have a bunch of 
uh, metal t-shirts to sell to. You see, there's not an actual metal shop. There is, I mean, so many online magazines that write about the stuff that coming out or Instagram pages that that write reviews for the albums, but nothing printed in the kiosk. Or you, you see what I mean? But at the same time, for example, when bands like Metallica come to Turkey or Dubai, most of the people that are there are from Iran. You can see that everyone raising the Iranian flag in the crowd. You're like, you see, these people are fucking thirsty for this. They they can't wait to see their favorite band. And whenever they anyone come near the Middle East, or even I would say, I had a friend that went to see Lamb of God when they came to India. You see? So if if these bands or even Iranian bands wants to perform, Definitely, they're going to sell tickets. They're going to sell merch. But there is not that type of... Because you got to get permissions, permits to be able to perform everything. They're not going to give you that type of thing with that kind of a massive audience. Because in in Iran, like any other country that it is having this kind of a same political system, um, like China or Russia... A big crowd is a national security matter. No matter what they are doing, anything more than a thousand, it's not safe. So they have to they have to predict that when these people come together and the power of music gets to their soul, what they're gonna do? Are they gonna say some slogans against the regime and all that? So it's a very complicated thing when it comes to and, and then you will notice that, oh, there's so much more than just a bunch of kids just want to have some fun. You see? So it is a, it's a very complicated thing when it comes to things like this, especially with art, because at the end, I noticed that the government knows the power of art more than me as an artist. Because even when I was writing, I was like, yeah, I know what I'm saying. I know what the punishment can be. This is my resolution. This is what I see upon myself to say. But when they arrested me, I was like, okay, this is very, then this is very powerful. It was a big government comes after a 21 year old dude. It means that what you were saying, you really scared them off. This is what actually Alisa from, um, uh, Arch Enemy once told me that your music should have been very special because it scared a government to come after you and you like drag you out of your bed to just arrest you and see that what's left in your mind and how they should fix you and all that. So yeah, I would say this is my answer to your question. You uh, expressed the hope that things could get better in the future, but what things uh, should change then for things to get better from top to the bottom from top to the bottom everything should be changing that because unfortunately with all this suppression and so many things so many bad elements is added into our very historical culture as as a country that has been around for thousands of years and this 44 years of of this of this political system that we have in Europe is uh, it has been a disaster. It didn't really. I mean, yeah, the first they came out with uh, with this anti uh, imperialistic against yeah we should stand against east and west during the cold war and you know so it it is all and being independent it's it, these are uh these are some nice ideologies i can stand behind it i mean why not being independent as a country who can say no as an Iranian, as a, as who, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, these are, but the, the result after that wasn't the same as they said. It was just, it was a whole fucking mess in 
every side of 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 a of a Iranian life, economy to culture to um, like uh, international relationship with the countries and having this hostile um, behavior that we should fight the world and. And this is not a, that Iranian is abound. I'm, I'm coming from a country that we we, we grew up with with poems and uh, and you know th- those type of things. It's not in our blood. We cannot do that. And so this is the reason that they basically gathered uh, one or two, three million people around them that vote for them to to go to the street, to chant death to America, to burn flags and all that. And the rest of the Iranians are like, I cannot do anything, you see? So it's, um, <coughs> this is what we are dealing with at the moment. And it, it has been like this for decades, at least two decades. But, um, but, my people are doing their, their thing. I mean, everyone is uh, is trying to, because people are not scared anymore, you know. It's very easier for them to go in the street and, and, and fight for their rights than, than 10 years ago. Because, you know, when they kill people in the street and you see blood, you're, 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 you're not scared anymore. Because when you do not have anything more to lose, then, you know... So I, I'm I'm hopeful for the future. I hope that things would change and uh, and we would be able to to go back to our own country and uh, and fix it again. But uh, it's a very uphill fight, and uh, yeah, it's a once again it's a very long discussion. It's it's I can just hope for the best. Thank you so much. That was very enlightening. 